This program contains archival footage and reenactments of real events and real people. This program is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning. 64 degrees at 8 o'clock. It's Tuesday, September 11th. I'm Lee Harris. Here's what's happening. It's primary day and the polls are open. You couldn't course. live within or visit New York without getting a tour of the tower. And if you were really intrepid, you might actually go to the roof. Stay where you are. When the World Trade Center buildings were going up, my dad told me, when those are finished, we're going to go up on the top. My dad said these buildings will last for a thousand years. They'll be here forever. It was a terrific place to work. And on a clear day, you could see the curvature of the Earth. I said, no, it's not possible. It's not possible that my life is going to end this way. Well, I'm Christy. I'm going to be helping you out today, so. It was really every fiber in your body is screaming. It's like, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. They're all notified. Fire department, British, huh? Great so. So where are you from, London? I'm from the South Coast. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 smashes into the north side of World Trade Center number one. The first alarm is called in just 12 seconds after impact. People are in shock, and yet no one can possibly imagine the scope of the disaster only beginning to unfold in Lower Manhattan. At the moment of impact, six floors are destroyed, hundreds are killed, and nearly 10,000 gallons of jet fuel dump into the gaping hole between the 93rd and 99th floors. The fate of everyone in the building will be decided in the next hour and 42 minutes. I heard the bang. I thought it was thunder or something. He goes, look outside. I looked outside. I said, holy shit. It looks like a plane hit it or something. Billions of TV viewers around the world have a front row seat for the unfolding disaster. But people inside the Trade Center have no idea what's happened. Manager of construction Frank Martini and his wife Nicole are just five floors below the point of impact. What do you think it was? Frank? Responsible for rebuilding the Trade Center after the 1993 bomb attack, Frank knows the towers inside and out. Shouldn't we be getting out of here? Frank, hey, hey, do you know what happened? No idea. I'd say the building moved 10, maybe 12 feet. Uh, more like 20. What's it like out there? A lot of debris. People pretty shocked. Can they clear it? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Honey, uh, find somewhere less smoky. Uh, Alan's office, maybe? Uh, stay there till they find a way out. Mac, Pablo, and me, we're going to check out the rest of the floor. You think the building's all right? Well, if the slip joint's held, yeah. Mac, yeah, get your gear. Right Frank was very well respected by everybody. He was very knowledgeable of the building. Try to persuade him to come down. He was in love in the, with the Trade Center. Please. OK. Frank wanted to make sure that everybody in the, on the floor is out completely, nobody on the floor. Toxic smoke quickly spreads to the 11 levels above the crash. On the 106th floor, financial managers have begun arriving for a conference at Windows on the World, one of New York's most famous restaurants. Listen up, everybody. Everyone, listen up, everybody, please. Everyone, please, we've got to stay calm. OK? 
can, can you listen up? I am going to call the emergency services. They will be with us shortly, okay? Assistant Manager Christine Olander is in charge of the conference center. Christine volunteered to come in and help get this setup organized, and, and that's why she was there early that day. It was uh, very typical of Christine to, uh, to do that. She wasn't asked and she wasn't told. She just uh, knew that it was something that would help. Port Authority Police Officer Mag. Yes, hi, this is Christine, Assistant GM of Windows. We're getting no direction up here. We're having a smoke condition. We have most people on the 106th floor. The 107th floor is way too smoky. Christine calls the in-house police force of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, manager of the World Trade Center. Uh, you know, our guests are scared. Stairways A, B, and C blocked off in smoke. Yes. Okay, dear, go back in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> You're on the air right now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead, what can you tell us? This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Clearly, something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. The point of impact fatally divides the North Tower. Only people below the 93rd floor have access to escape routes. Six floors below the crash site, investment banker Hong Zhu attempts to call 911 from the rubble of his office. I say we go, I say we go now. Sorry, your call cannot be taken right now. Please hold the line. We just suddenly felt there was a big shake, a rumble. I say we go, I say we go now. You can't just hang around waiting for something. And uh, after that uh, initial rumble, we looked around. Uh, the ceilings caved in, and uh, we didn't know what happened. Come on, kiddo. We need to get out of Hung's here. Hung's colleague, Harry Ramos, is a head trader at the May Davis Group. Are coming with us? I think we should stay here and wait for instructions. But why? It's an emergency. Somehow I remembered in 1993 there was uh, uh, an incident in uh, World Trade Center, and uh, some people died not because of the bo uh, bomb, uh, but because uh, they were stepped upon uh, exiting the building. Hong, the building just moved 10 feet. It's not safe. Folks, come on, gotta go. No, I'm staying. People, and good move. luck. Hey, no. You too. Sorry, your call cannot be taken right now. Please hold the line. In the first minutes after the crash, New York's 911 system is overwhelmed with thousands of calls. Port Authority emergency lines are also flooded with desperate calls from people inside World Trade Center 1 and from family and friends trying to reach them. We want you out the building, ma'am. Sir, there are emergency services on their way to you. Evacuate the building. Emergency services are on their way. Most people in the North Tower choose to evacuate. Do not use the elevator. Use the stairwells. Evacuate the building. But many are stopped by automated security announcements telling people to stay where they are. All personnel, remain at your desks. Please remain at your desks. All personnel, remain at your desks. Hi, I'm calling on the 43rd floor. What are we supposed to do? We want you out the building, ma'am. Do not use the elevator. Use the stairwells. Evacuate the building. But they're saying not to. All personnel, remain at your desks. Please remain at your desks. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. Could you just hold the line for a sec? PA's telling them to stay where they are. What? C can we turn it off from here? No. With the plane's impact, the building's vital systems begin to fail. Ceilings buckle, water lines are cut, and doors are wedged shut inside their frames. Many people are prisoners in offices throughout the building. This is SCC. Hello? Hello, we need some assistance. 
Flight 11 wipes out all three stairwells and every elevator to the upper levels, trapping 1,355 people above the point of impact. They're a quarter mile in the sky, and there is no way down. <coughs> Sir. <coughs> Sir, did you, did you check out the elevators? Yeah, but they're all burned out. <coughs> right. Um, we need water. <coughs> the faucets aren't working. Can you please try to find some bottled water? Water from the vase is anything. Thank you. Hi, this is Christine calling from the North Tower of the World Trade Center. We need help. What is your situation? Right now we need a safe haven. Can you direct us to a certain quadrant? Hi, ma'am. I have to get on the radio as soon as possible. As soon as humanly possible. The people are asking whether they can break the windows. They can't breathe. Um, can we break the windows? No. For the moment, do not break the windows. So what do we do? I had appointed Christine as the um, fire warden. Check out the and so she took it very seriously. And, I, and, um, and so I know that she did exactly what was expected of her on that morning. There's a service exit onto the roof. It's usually locked, but you never know. <laughs> I watched it. I seen it. It's the largest rescue operation in New York City history. Within minutes, more than a thousand first responders are on the scene. Once we turned the corner onto Canal Street, what we saw was was a nightmare. So I was looking at 20 floors of fire, which translated into 20 acres of fire. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, how are we going to deal with this? Okay, come on, guys, move it through. Watch your step. Come on, come on. No fireman on, has ever guys. faced a skyscraper blaze of this scale. Get through. All they can do is let the fire burn itself out. Your tools down, fellas. This is strictly a rescue operation. Jay Jonas is captain of Ladder Company 6. Okay, check your packs. One of the firemen from Rescue 1 said what we were all thinking. He came out and he said, we may not live through today. And we all looked at him and he says, you're right. And we stopped and we took the time to shake each other's hands and wish each other good luck. Not yet, guys. They've had their orders. We haven't had ours yet. But out of all those guys I was surrounded by, I'm the only one who's alive. They all perished. Just six floors below the point of impact, Hong Zhu is still trying to get through to a 911 operator. For Harry Ramos and his colleagues from May Davis who have chosen to evacuate, conditions in the stairwell are bad and getting worse. It's bad outside here. <coughs> Anybody got any water? <coughs> Get a piece of fabric, clothing, handkerchief, anything. Yeah, I've got my lucky shirt here. Some water on it. Mass evacuation was never one of the safety plans considered when the World Trade Center was built. There are only three narrow stairwells in each tower. Oh, this is the finest stairwell. <laughs> I don't trust the elevators. Everybody okay back there? The stairwells weren't designed to move thousands of people out of the building quickly. They aren't even continuous. When machinery rooms and elevator shafts get in the way, People racing down must exit at the bottom of one set of stairs, then cross the building to find the top of another. But only on certain floors. Three out of every four are locked. What do you think, guys? Try another one? Yeah. I say we go back to the sky lobby. Maybe take an elevator if it's working. If not, find another stairwell. Is everybody cool with that? OK, let's go. There are 99 elevators in each tower both express and locals like the subway. Port Authority employees Jan Dempscher and Al Smith find themselves in another World Trade Center nightmare, trapped in a Twin Towers elevator. What we dropped a few floors, five, maybe 10. Yeah? So uh, what do we do now? Anybody got any ideas? We call for help. Maybe. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Port Authority. We have a large explosion in the building. And finally, a voice people. came over the intercom, not the recording that it normally gives. A voice came over and said, we have had a large explosion in the building. The Port Authority. We have a large explosion in the building. And that was it. And there was no more. And boom, the line of dead. Tell them to get us out of here. You're gonna send someone to help us get out of here? We have some problems, I think. And we never speak again with the man on an on intercom. When you're inside, you still like a cat in a cage. I don't have any clue what's happened outside elevator or in the building. I said, we have to make a decision. Nobody gonna come and help us. We blocked the door with some wet Kleenex, and that sucks up some of the smoke. The trapped Port Authority operators now have an emergency in their office as well. Yeah. But, but we still can't get out. Thanks. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Hi. This is Melanie. I'm with the conference. We're trying to get up onto the roof, but we can't. I see. Where exactly are you? I'm not sure what number the door won't open. Yeah, you need a swipe card. Here. Can you open them from down there? I'm sorry, we're not able to do that from here. So what are we going to do? I'm afraid you're going to have to find a, a way now. We've tried, but we can't. Well, then you're going to have to wait for the emergency services to come to you. I'm sorry. Use the stairwell. I see. Even if Melanie Devere and the others could make it onto the roof, escape would be impossible. There is no official plan for helicopter evacuations, and conditions are too dangerous to try. Police pilots circling the tower have been forbidden to land or rappel down to the building. All right, just through here. That's it, keep low. Watch your heads. That's it. All right, everything's fine. Janet, you take him through. <coughs> Frank! Oh, Frank, are you hurt? No, 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 I'm fine. Frank, his wife, was telling him, come on, join me, let's... And, and she kept actually in the call saying that to him. And he told her just to go, I'm going to meet you down the stairs. No, please, yeah, No, Frank, look, look, there are people trapped up here. I know this building, I know how to get them out. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't. I'll be fine. And that's where Frank would always cross the line. Mm -hmm. I mean... You would say, okay, I've done what I can do. I'm going to get out of here. And Frank just never had that point. Frank? I say we check out the tech room. Sure. Hey, hey. I'll see you in a few minutes. Huh? Come on, let's go. What Frank doesn't know is that a Boeing 767 has sliced through 36 support columns with critical fireproofing blown away by the force of the crash. The towers were designed to survive the impact of a commercial airplane. But inside the gaping hole, the heat of the burning jet fuel is enough to soften unprotected steel. One floor closer to the fire is Rick Bryan, a manager at MetLife. I'm one step into the hallway, and I was struck by the blackness that was in front of me. It was the, the deepest, the richest black that I had ever seen. Anybody there? Anybody there? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you have the keys to the door. You can easily open the door and go back <laughs> from where you came. Hello? But can you be certain that your keys are going to work? Hello? And I was frightened, I was very frightened. So instead of continuing down the hall, I went back into our office and let the door close. And it was actually our two coworkers on the other side, down that hallway, that ended up dying on that day. And I often think now, Perhaps I should have continued down that hallway. 
Elevator 41 is a shuttle from the Sky Lobby on 44, stopping only on floors 67 through 74. I wouldn't say panic. I would say uh, people was beginning to, I know I was, was beginning to get a little edgy. Because the shuttle doesn't stop on the 50th yeah. floor, they'll have to dig their own door through three inches of sheetrock. Oh, so what do we do now? We make coal. But it's concrete. No, it's not. It's sheetrock. Hey, he's right. It's it's sheetrock. It's, it's, it's plasterboard. Windows. <coughs> we have to have air. The fresh air is going down fast. I am not exaggerating. Uh, Ma'am, I know you're not exaggerating. We're getting a lot of these calls. We're sending the fire department up as soon as possible. What are we going to do for air? Ma'am, the fire department's on its way. Can we break a window? <coughs> you can do whatever you have to do to get the air. Break a window, somebody! Break a window! There were no evacuation plans because builders assumed fires could be contained without spreading to other floors. Firemen call it defend in place. In theory, everyone else in the building is safe. down behind them outside a Looked like a suit a, a man suit and I said to myself why would anyone do that who who would throw a suit out the window what is that about in all more than 100 people jump or fall from the upper floors of the North Tower. Christine Allender makes four calls to the Port Authority for help. After that, nobody from Windows on the World is heard from again. We went to her apartment and that. Her uh, answering machine was just full with messages. No more could be that friends were calling her because my son took, uh, listened to the whole, to the end. And that answering machine we brought home that I have it. Just 130 feet from the disaster in the North Tower, World Trade Center number two, the South Tower, is safe for now. But the massive destruction in the other building is inescapable. Many begin to evacuate the South Tower too, Stanley Prainmith, a banker on the 81st floor of the South Tower, decides to evacuate. But he too is stopped by security announcements and guards in the lobby, telling people it's safer to go back upstairs to their offices. Had I known, had I known, had I known that this building was in fire next door and a plane had gone into this building, I would never have gone back up. I would have gone straight home. Building 2 is secure. There is no need to evacuate Building 2. I'm not sure about this, guys. We got no choice. <laughs> Within short order, it became clear that we had to leave because the smoke was getting, it was getting, uh, it, was, it was getting frightening. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, guys, this way. Follow me. <laughs> the smoke was so thick and so black, and I could, could not see. And as I'm walking down the hall through this blackness, I'm thinking to myself, well, you're going to die of suffocation, of smoke inhalation. How many breaths do you need to take of smoke-filled air for, before you actually pass out? Is the time, is it measured in the number of breaths or is it measured in a number of minutes? Is there a period of time when you're breathing in smoke that you can feel yourself being overcome or does it happen instantaneously? I, I did not know. And I was annoyed at myself for not knowing. Let's try this way, huh? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yes, sir, you have a, a 2.30 followed by 4.15. In this confined area with the door closed now, it actually seemed quite safe. Well, I'll see what I can do, but we're having a bit of problems with the phone. Why? When they came in, I was surprised that they were there. Well, we have a situation here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, do you have a fire extinguisher? Uh, on the wall above the cupboard. Thanks. And then I was even more surprised that they had just come out of an office that was on fire. Thanks. <laughs> yes, sir? I said to myself, look, you, you have to do something. <laughs> Within two seconds, I realized what a ridiculous task I was trying to accomplish. I was trying to put out this inferno with this stream of fluid that couldn't have been more than a quarter of an inch wide. My heart went into my throat from my chest. And at that point, I knew we were in trouble. Harry Ramos has reached the sky lobby on the 78th floor. A high-speed express elevator to the lobby would take seconds. But people are instructed to avoid elevators in a high-rise fire. Harry is committed to using the stairs, if he can find them. Still in his office on the 87th floor, Hong Zhu has been calling 911 since the moment of impact and finally gives up. While nearly everyone in the building is trying to get down, Port Authority engineers Frank Martini, Pablo Ortez, and Mac Hanna are going up. This way, down there. Sure. I gotta call my sister. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, Diana, it's Frank. Is Nina there? No, Frank. Now, I need you to get a message to her. Sure. There's, uh, there's been another explosion at the World Trade Center. I need you to find her right away and tell her that me and Nicole are fine. I don't want to hear about it on the radio. Well, sure, of course. What about you? Are you OK? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Listen, I got to go. Thanks, Diana. <coughs> this way, Dan. Hey, let's keep moving, huh? This way. Come on, right through here. That's it. Keep going. Less than 15 minutes after the crash, Ladder 6 Captain Jay Jonas receives his orders to go up the North Tower. He, he just closed his eyes and he shook his, shook his head and he says, 
just take your guys upstairs and do the best you can. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a big black shadow on the ground. I still don't know. We heard that a plane had hit. And Stanley Premnath is already back at his desk in the South Tower. His round trip journey to the lobby took just 15 minutes. Yeah, I guess. Um, so I'm standing up with the phone in my hand. Well, we're, we're fine. My coffee and bagel that I bought when I was coming up still sits there on the desk. And I'm looking towards the Statue of Liberty, the direction of, with the phone in my hand. And that's when the plane caught my eyes. And this plane is bearing down on me. I love eye contact. I'm hypnotized standing up there. I I'm not having time to react. All I'm looking at is this plane, and it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Lord, I can't do this, you take over. And I dove under my desk. It's 7 jet Oh, Oh, my God! Jesus Yeah. Wow. That... That... That apparently does look like it is in the other building at this point. That's true. Alright, this is 1690. We didn't have to call the floor to hold up, but he said a new explosion just happened at 2 World Trade Center at, on the 80th floor. Oh, holy. United Airlines Flight 175, bound for Los Angeles, crashes into World Trade Center Building 2, the South Tower, between the 77th and 85th floors. Once again, nearly 10,000 gallons of jet fuel ignite instantly. But unlike the North Tower, because the 767 strikes at an angle, one staircase remains intact. The bizarre thing is, the phone starts to ring. I don't know who is trying to dial me, but the phone is ringing. And I'm saying to myself, I gotta be dreaming. This is not real. In the real world, the plane crashes, you die. This is not real. I got to be dreaming. I live. Some areas on the impact floors are spared total destruction from the fireball, including the office of Brian Clark, an executive at Eurobrokers. The sensation was that our whole building moved to the Hudson River and kept moving a distance of six to eight feet. I know that sounds preposterous, and whether it did move six to eight feet, I don't know, but that was the sensation. And I had this terrifying thought that we're going over. Everyone okay. <laughs> In a split second, okay. our room just absolutely disintegrated. It was as if a, a demolition crew had been given all the right equipment, sledgehammers and crowbars, go through and destroy this space, and you've got a whole day to do it. But it happened in an, in an instant. Okay, listen up. <laughs> There's a good chance of fire. We have to exit this building as soon as possible. No time to get your stuff. Just follow me. going down yeah we're going down in the south tower there are 637 people at or above the impact zone wait 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 where are you going it's bad down there smoke planes real bad oh, i understand i understand but trust me we have to get out of the building and the only way out is down i say we go back up even with stairwell a intact only 18 of them will find the stairs and escape. Find a different way down. Look, it's bad upstairs, but it's not going to get any better. Help! Help! What was that? Okay. Help! Come, on, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I heard this noise inside the 81st floor, this sort of banging, and this voice screaming for help. Help! Help! I'm buried. Is anybody there? I can't breathe. 
And I said, come on, Ron, we've got to get this guy. Is there anybody in here? As I went through the gap sideways, I saw the rest of the group on the stairwell, and they all went up, and they all died that day. Okay, let's round everyone up, check they're okay, see who's missing. Uh, I'll call emergency services again and find Elaine out. Elaine Gentoul is head of human resources at Private Bankers Fiduciary Trust. Look, check outside to see if you can find yeah, a yeah, way Yeah, yeah, okay, out. I'm on it. One of the first calls she makes is to her husband, Jack. Elaine? Yeah, me. First thing I said was, thank God you're all right. And she said, well, not really. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, I don't know. I heard some sort of explosion below us. I don't know what it was. And I said, well, it doesn't make sense because the plane hit the other building. It didn't hit your building. She said, well, there was some kind of explosion beneath us. I don't know what And I didn't know what to make of that. And she out? said, um, well. No, we're trying to figure out what we should be doing. Yeah. It's getting really hot in here, and there's smoke coming out of the vents. She didn't know whether they should stay or leave. And she didn't know what to do about the situation that was growing worse. Elaine, huh? it doesn't look good. I had no idea that there was a plane that hit her building. She had no idea that a plane hit that building. And I'm screaming, Lord, I don't want to die. Please send somebody, anybody to help me. And as I'm screaming, I realize I'm temporarily deaf. I couldn't hear. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Is there anybody in here? And I crawled the entire length of the loans department through the lounge, into the computer room, into the communication room, and that's the farthest I could have gotten. Because one lousy sheet rock wall stood firm, blocking my path. Is someone there? Yeah. I can't see you. Keep going. What? I, I can't see you. I turned my flashlight toward the, the voice. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. What I remember asking him was, what is your name? He said, Brian Clark. What are the chances for you to have a flashlight? He said, I'm a fire warden. Damn it, to your left. But I suddenly heard this person yeah. with this, this yeah. saying, can you see my hand? Can you see my hand? Here, here, here. can you see my hand? Okay, guys, here's the deal. It's a raw one. We have to go to the upper floors for search and rescue. Only thing is we can't use the elevator, so we're gonna take stairwell B. 10 floors at a time. 10 floors, quick rest, 10 more. I told them, I says, they're trying to kill us, boys. Says, Let's go to work. And to their credit, every one of them, they, they looked at me and says, okay, Cap, we're with you. There was thousands of people upstairs that needed our help, and that's where we gotta go. Carrying over 100 pounds of equipment, Jay Jonas and his men are facing hours of climbing to make their way up the North Tower. There are over 200 flights of stairs in each building. Even coming down by foot can take an hour or more. But emergency lighting has been improved since the 93 bomb attack. Thousands of people use the stairs to exit the building. And yet, some are unable to get out on their own. One of them is Victor Wald. Now he made it from the 83rd floor down to the 59th floor. So he made it down over 25 flights. Sir, do you need a hand? 
I just think probably he just became more frightened. Sometimes you just become, you know, you can't move your legs anymore. I'll send someone back up to find you, okay? I'll just hold you back. Go on. Uh, no, Victor, you stay, I stay. I don't know why he was drawn to Victor. I have no idea why. You guys don't need to hang around. Why don't you take off? I'll meet you downstairs when we get there. They had no connection. They didn't know each other at all. You know, they just could have walked by him like a lot of people would have done. Come on. Yeah, let's get you on your feet. That was when I saw Harry was helping a gentleman uh, who I did not know, and uh, quite slowly. Hey, you decided to take the day off after all. <laughs> Hong, this is Victor. Victor, this is Hong. We're gonna help him get out of here. Okay, guys, let's take a rest here. Drink some water. We're at war with somebody. I don't know who we're at war with, but we're at war with somebody. Check your packs, we leave again in two. Not only the United States is a target, but, you know, right where I'm standing is, is a major target. Now, is there going to be a third plane? Is there going to be a fourth plane? We didn't know. What the hell is it going to be like up there? Guys, you ready? OK, let's go. In the South Tower, Brian Clark and Stanley Prainmouth are still on the 81st floor and still separated by a mountain of debris. You're gonna have to climb over the top. I'm not sure I can do that. Well, you're gonna have to. I said, the only way out of here is you to go over this. You must do this. And I climbed up on some stuff and kind of looked down at him. He scrambled up like a cat and I tried to, he fell down once. I said, you must do this. And this person behind this wall is telling me if I want to live, I must climb over. He says, you jump on the other side, I'll catch you. He said, hallelujah, I've been saved, which was sort of took me back. This man really thought I was crazy. And I don't know how to thank a man who just saved my life. I reached down, I hugged this man, and I give him a kiss. And he gave me this great big kiss. This man says, whoa, 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 what are you doing? He says, Brian Clark. And he said, uh, I'm Stanley. We'll be brothers for life. I said, well, that's great. As we started to dust ourselves off, I said, uh, oh, that works for me. <laughs> I never had a brother. And now I do. <laughs> and this man put his hand around my shoulder and he says, come on, buddy, let's go home. And the first time in my life, I cried like a baby because nobody never showed me that kind of compassion in my life before. A total stranger. Back in the North Tower, the occupants of Elevator 41 are winning the battle of the sheetrock. Chip, right, chip, right, chip, right, chip. Finally, after maybe 40 minutes or so, he got a hole about the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> Sweet smell of fresh air. Yes, sir. Well, who'd have thought it, fella? <laughs> World Trade Center made out of sheep rock. Huh? We need some help. I got from her is 100th floor World Trade Center. 100. She was able to speak just um, barely. Frank, Pablo, and Mac are still rescuing people trapped in offices in the North Tower, Don't take the elevator. but finally begin to think about saving themselves, too. We're sending two more down. We're coming down, too. Do you copy? I think you truly did know every inch of the building, both buildings, of the towers. He knew him. <laughs> Let's head down. Listen. That's uh, MetLife, right? Yeah. 
Let's go. Help! I'm stuck in here! I can't get out! Help! It was apparent that within a few minutes, the smoke would be We're thick enough and we would not survive. Wait, I think I heard something. And I hear the pounding. Pound, pound, bang, bang, bang. Nobody knew that the wall was merely a plasterboard or sheetrock. Stand back. We're coming through. I thought it was concrete. It looked like concrete. It was painted like concrete. But I didn't know. Nobody knew. Hey. Anybody hurt? No, everyone's OK. All right. Coming through, Mac. All right, everybody, this way. On this day, these fellas that were gray collar workers and blue collar workers um, had the wherewithal to save everyone else, while the lawyers and the accountants didn't quite know what to do and had no sense of how to act in this situation. And these fellas did. You all right, sir? Frank, take him down. No, 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 no. I'm staying here. Frank, Nicole is waiting for you. She'll be waiting for you. Mac? Yeah? Can you get him down? Frank, you go. No, no, no. We'll be right behind you after we check out the other floors. OK. This way, sir. <laughs> We should head up. If there are people trapped here, there are probably others. You think the structure's holding up? I don't know. That's what we gotta find out. We should head down. And I just said... Thanks, huh? And he nodded back in return. Um, and that's the, the last I, uh, I saw of this fella. Until I was flipping through the... Um, pages and pages and pages of uh, obituary photographs several weeks later. As, as I'm flipping through these pages of hundreds of people, I see this fella's face. I'm like, that's the guy. That's the guy who I was nose to nose with. And I saw his name, Frank Martini. And now I knew who the fella was. But here he was. Here was his picture, and he, uh, he didn't make it out. Passenger jets have crashed into the Twin Towers of New York's World Trade Center. The disaster happened shortly after. Right now, all of lower Manhattan is shut down. Everybody here is skimming the skies looking for a possible attack. Every fire and rescue crew has been told to be waiting For Harry and Hong, the elevator is a last resort. It could be dangerous, but it may be their only hope of getting Victor out of the building. Oh, Look. If everyone agrees, I'm happy to volunteer. You okay with that? Yeah. Harry and Victor are just two floors above elevator 41. Can you see anything? Another wall. Maybe it's thinner than the other one. Well, only one way to find out. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Bathroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, anybody need to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Frank D. Martini knows that no skyscraper in the world has ever collapsed. The very possibility that one of the twin towers could collapse has been inconceivable until now. Pablo? Yeah. 
I don't like the look of this. <coughs> Construction manager to base. I'm on the 78th floor, North Tower. The express elevators are at risk of collapse. The steel is failing. We need a structural engineer. Do you copy? Construction manager to base. I'm on the 78th floor. Fire department, I copy you. Yeah, I need a structural engineer in the 78th floor sky lobby now. The elevators are at risk of collapse. Do you copy? Frank's message is the first and only time an expert on the inside warns that the structure could be headed toward catastrophic failure. The intense heat is weakening the steel in the floor trusses, causing them to sag. If they start to collapse, the added weight will be too much for the floor below. Once it starts, it won't stop. Every time we think it can't get any worse, we are now learning that the FAA has, is shutting down all takeoffs anywhere in the country. Now, the FBI, according to the Associated Press, is investigating reports of a plane hijacking just before those crashes. President Bush calls this a, uh, an apparent terrorist attack. The president is in the air. Uh, he's returning to aircraft, fighter aircraft, armed with guns and missiles, uh, have direct orders to divert uh, and or shoot down any plane that seems bent on crashing into something else. Now we have unconfirmed reports there has been an explosion. There is a fire at the Pentagon here in Washington. A huge fire has engulfed the Pentagon. And even more terrifying, a big chunk of the building has been destroyed. In fact, uh, we have obviously a state of siege here uh, in the nation's capital as this uh, apparently coordinated attack takes place. Let's uh, right now go to the White House area, the White House grounds of... Looks like he got stuck or got out. He'll come back. But what if he doesn't? Then we'll think of something else. Welcome back. It's clear. Great. But only as far as the 44th floor. Oh. Come on, it's better than nothing, Victor. All right. All right. Almost home, huh? We're gonna try to break out. It's just too smoky in here. Did you wet your clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I have to go. Okay. And Jack? <laughs> tell the boys. Tell the boys I love them. I said, I will. And I love you. She said, I love you. I said, I love you. She said, I love you. I said, I love you. She said, I'm scared. And I said, call me when you get down. <laughs> oh, God. When I hung up the phone, I was horrified. Just horrified. Because she wasn't saying, she was saying goodbye. She was saying goodbye. That's how it felt. That's what it was. <laughs> when we hung up, uh, I called our minister and I asked him to pray, and he said he'd have a prayer chain, and then I prayed. And I felt her body go right through mine, and I knew she was gone. I, I gotta make a call. Why you taking that? By 9.46 a.m., more than one-third of the New York City Fire Department is at the World Trade Center. Hey, buddy. Do we know what's going on? Pentagon got hit. What? The Pentagon? I said uh, it was an accident. Now, that fireman said no. We're at war. Now, that words were really scary. It was war. Hi, you don't know me, but I need you to make a call for me. Who is 
My name is Victor Wald. I'm in the World Trade Center. Oh my God. I can't get through to my wife. I'm asking you to call her. Uh, her number is the same as yours, except there's a six at the end instead of a seven. And what's the message? Could you just tell her... Tell her... I'm all right. Okay. Okay, I will. Thanks. They just yeah. hit the Pentagon. We better be clear on these doors. I really think we should go. Now. Al-Qaeda. Al what? Come on. Al-Qaeda. They're a bunch of terrorists. Yeah, whoever they are, we gotta go now. Guys, I bet you it was them. Guys, guys, take this exit. Come on, not this exit. Go, Victor, go. I'm back. Now, this is the man who will help us down. Huh? I think about them in my prayers. And that's why I'm going to make God bless him wherever he is. Because if it hadn't been for him us leading us to the safety, I wouldn't be sitting here talking now. This is 10 on 450. Do you copy? I've got six civilians. Do you copy? Follow me. Uh, yes. How yeah. do you get out of here? Oh, come on. Please, please, trust me. Come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> hey, let's hope this one works. No more. Elevators. What? Are oh, you gonna walk? Well, I prefer. And I come into the elevator, I see the big sign. Do not use the elevator when it's fire. And I stay and I, I, I don't know what to do. I said, uh, something's wrong. Listen, man, it'll take 30 minutes to walk down. We may not have 30 minutes. I said, that man is not responsible for himself because if you be stuck at another elevator, who's gonna help you? You got no choice, my friend. Come on! What, what's your name? Yeah. Jan? I'm Al. Good to see you. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you. By 9.58, more than 500 members of the New York City Fire Department are inside the Twin Towers, spread throughout both buildings. Firefighters are reported as high as the 54th floor of the North Tower and the 78th floor Sky Lobby in the South Tower. Hey, fellas. This way. Down the corridor, on your left, into the office. Guys, take a rest. Two minutes. In World Trade Center 2, nearly 8,000 people have succeeded in evacuating. Although it was hit second, time has run out for the South Tower. for you. <laughs> no problem. We're brothers, right? Yeah. Now let's get out of here. In the North Tower, the stairwells are a slow-moving chain of refugees from the upper levels. Rick Bryan and the others rescued on the 89th floor are nearing the end of their long trek down a mountain of stairs. sudden a huge cloud of of this dark gray smoke comes shooting up the stairway um, and just covering everyone and everything 
and it was hot, very, very hot. Our building started to shake. It swayed back and forth, and then the lights went out. I said, is that what I thought it was, thinking that part of our building collapsed? And he just looked at me in a very serious face. He said, the South Tower has just collapsed. Knowing that a high-rise building has never collapsed before. And now the sister building that we were in had suffered the same fate, but it got hit later than ours, had just collapsed. So I'm thinking to myself as he said that, he says, we're going to be lucky to get out of here. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, I want us out of here now. Pick up your stuff. We're heading out right now. Sal, your rope. You got it, Cap. Get your stuff. The sheer terror that we're in this building. We're, we're dead men walking. Come on, Fuzz. Keep it coming. I can't see anything. The fire department's a, a semi-military organization, and you don't do things without orders. So I was basically self-evacuating. It was my instinct that I perceived the danger, and I acted on it. OK. I'm going to go it. What was that? It sounded like an explosion. Victor, you gotta be positive. It's got to go. In case you hadn't noticed, we're still only on the 36th floor. Well, that's only 36 more floors to go. Come on. We have to go. Now, come on. He let the family down? He could have probably pushed himself harder. But he didn't have to sit there and wait. He let people down. I don't think he realized how important he was in the family. Look, how about if you try going down like sitting? I'm telling you, I can't move. You have to move! Oh, you move! Get out of here! That fireman's words to me, I really felt was a way to get me off the hook. I was grateful to that fireman. But to think back, very likely the fireman knew what kind of danger we were all in, but he himself didn't move. Harry? Of course, I do not have these shining characters a man should have. 
there was some cowardness, selfishness displayed in my action, in my behavior. Do you think we're going to make it, Harry? Harry. Yeah. We're going to make it, right? Sure we will. Now come on, you're going to have to move quicker. Get yourself up and let's go. Come on, fellas, keep it moving. Okay, Captain, right behind you. Captain. Come on, guys, move it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, all right. You okay? Come on, Fuzz. Keep it coming. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I've got a bad leg. Well, can you walk? Slowly. And Tommy Falco turns around and looks at me and he says, Hey, Cap, what do you want to do with her? And I, I took a deep breath. And it's like, ah. okay. let's give you a hand here. Come on, guys. We got ourselves a VIP to get down. Okay. Okay. So they're real well. And uh, people ask me, says, why did you do that? You know, you you could have passed her by. Nobody would have known. I says, I would have known. You know, and uh, the sight of her standing in the doorway would have haunted me forever. You can do it. Come on. Go fight. Within moments of the South Tower collapse, police and fire department radios are screaming for all personnel to evacuate the North Tower. But many firemen never hear the order. They're tuned to a different channel. A short time ago, nobody could conceive of a skyscraper collapsing. Now, police and fire department officials expect it to happen in the North Tower, too. It's just a matter of time. We know both towers were hit, but what more can you tell? I see many people running to save themselves. Most of those who ran past me are exhausted. Many of them just can't believe that this has happened or that they've been lucky enough to have made it out. I would have to say, at this distressing time, I can see a huge pillar of dust and smoke where one of the Twin Towers once stood. It's too soon to speculate on the full extent of the horrifying damage right now. It was really, every fiber in your body is screaming. It's like, you gotta get out of here. You gotta get out of here. Whoa, you, you okay? You okay? What was once, we are almost like running down the stairs. Guys, make a space. Now our evacuation is one step at a time, both feet on the same step, going very slowly. And now this is becoming like Chinese water torture going down the stairs. You know, the, time, the clock is ticking. Okay, guys, take a rest. Josephine, yeah. you want some water? No. Josephine, it wasn't a question. Drink some water. And I developed this this trait of mine, whenever a situation got more serious, I would speak more slowly and more deliberately because if the situation is that serious, you didn't need somebody screaming in your ear to add more anxiety to the situation. So I would try to diffuse that by speaking in a more calm manner. And I was at my calmest. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm gonna see if I can find us a chair we can carry it, okay? Yeah. 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 
Come on, take my hand. Here, go. Go. Yeah, this way. This way. Stay on the seat. Any word on our engineer? No. <coughs> you think we should go? No. I mean, I think he felt he could do it. I mean, why not? I may be hurt, I may be tired, I may be burnt, but I'll get out. Um... Yeah. So I broke into the fourth floor to look for some sort of a sturdy chair that we could put her on the chair and we could pick it up and run with her, thinking that we gotta keep moving. We gotta, you know, the time, the clock is ticking. You know, it's the biggest office building in the world, and it wasn't an office floor. <laughs> it was a mechanical equipment room floor. And I was way on the other side of the building, and I was running, and I never run out of fire. And something just told me, he says, you know what, this just isn't working out. We're just gonna have to drag her down the stairs. After one World Trade Center burns for 102 minutes, nearly twice as long as the South Tower, the center support column has reached the breaking point. Hundreds of firemen throughout the building still aren't aware rescue personnel are also evacuating the North Tower. I went out uh, from the side of the building and I kept walking on West Side Highway. And then I heard some people screaming. I looked back. That's when I saw a very, at a very close distance, I saw the building collapsed. At 10.28 a.m., 106 floors of concrete and steel come crashing down, floor by floor, one on top of another. And ran like hell, thank God. I'm 69, but I can still run. <laughs> There's gotta be fire and trap back there, though. Most people watching the collapse of the North Tower immediately assume that everyone inside has died. Everyone okay? Every time a floor hit another floor, it was like a loud boom, like a train that was off its tracks and was hitting the railroad ties. And it was getting closer and closer. Listen up, I'm gonna do a roll call. Billy. Yeah. So violent Mike. was the, the vibration that we were actually being bounced around Stop. off the floor. Yeah. And uh, just kept waiting. Just kept waiting for uh, that big beam or that big piece of concrete to come. And uh, for us, it didn't come. Matt? Yeah! Sounds like you dropped a couple of floors there, buddy. 
And how about our special guest? <laughs> you mean me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. And my name's Josephine. <laughs> Good job, Josephine. And I'm up here, you know, to have no idea what I look like. I never done them, but you're a great too, kiddo. <laughs> you can all you want, but it won't help. All the furnishings and the fixtures inside the building, none of that existed after the collapse. There were no desks, there were no phones, no computers, no copy machines, no, no chairs, nothing. That had all been pulverized by the, the tremendous amount of energy that was created by this collapse. And it was just pulverized into this dust. And we're in the geographic center of that dust. Dungeon Jonas, ladder six. We're on the fourth floor. North Tower. We need help. Do you copy? And uh, somebody got on the radio and said, where's the North Tower? <laughs> like I looked at my radio and I said, Where's the North Tower? I said, man, we're in trouble if they don't know where the North Tower is. I had stepped out onto West Street, wondering what could have happened to cause these, to cause this mess. Uh, the ash and the fire trucks twisted up like toys. I went back towards the building where there was a, a fireman. And I walked up to the fellow and I said, you know, hey, there's a, a body over here. He looked at me with a look that, that I sensed, hey, why is he looking at me like I have two heads, like I'm crazy? Why is he giving me this look? And he said, just go on. And I realized there were actually bodies and people scattered all over the place. And you couldn't see what the scene was like because everything was covered with ash. Cones are bodies. Cones are bodies. Cones are bodies. Cones are bodies. Two thousand seven hundred and forty-nine people died in the twin towers that morning, including Melanie Devere. Christine Olander, and more than 170 delegates, diners, and staff at Windows on the World. Elaine Gentoul and 95 of her colleagues at Fiduciary Trust, including Ed Emery. And 84 men and women who work for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. You know, the people that I knew at the Port Authority are Jerry Guggen, Bill Jones, Tommy, Claro, and Margie, and all these people, they've just, you know, just like... It was just like there was a big family. Are you gonna be okay? In the North Tower, Frank Martini and Pablo Ortez both gave their lives. They were still helping people escape when the building collapsed. Well, I mean, I think for me, there still is this burning, you know, hole that you don't really know what happened. And of course, I would like to know more about, you know, what was happening. And I know he'd love to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> he would be so sad to see them fall and um, saving as many people as he did, that it was somehow fitting that he he went up into the air with the, with the buildings. Along with Mac Hanna, who escaped helping an 89-year-old colleague from the Port Authority, Pablo and Frank saved the lives of more than 50 people. Among them, Rick Bryan and the 22 people trapped on the 89th floor, including That's right. That's receptionist right. Diane DeFontes. Yes, Pablo's wife put up a website and her children were on it and I sent her an email and I, I, and, and I told her, I tried to tell her how I felt and that her husband and their father is the reason that I'm alive and I know that 
his absence is a terrible thing. But here is a man that you can be proud of because he saved other people's lives. Stanley Pramnith and Brian Clark both survived. 61 people from Brian's company, Eurobrokers, lost their lives. 23 from Stanley's. Victor Wald and Harry Ramos were both killed in the collapse of the North Tower. We got a picture of Harry Ramos. It was a brilliant picture. It was a very sharp picture with a Rolex watch. And I said to my children, well, you know, Victor didn't die by himself. An angel came and, and took him, and Harry was his angel. Harry was the only person from his company, Mae Davis, who did not survive. And Hung, you know, he helped to the fullest, and then he made a decision he had to leave. And I think that was a better decision to make because he thought of that, you know, he had to think of himself at some point. And he tried to help a man, but if Victor couldn't help himself at a point, he analyzed the situation, he made the decision he had to go. He probably feels bad about it, but he made the correct decision. The five people trapped in Elevator 41 all escaped, including Al Smith and Yam okay. Demsher. Can't imagine, I'm, I'm short and he's tall. <laughs> I hear uh, Battalion 18 to Lotta 6, Battalion 18 to Lotta 6. Is that you on a radio? I say, yeah, it's me. Rescue three to ladder six, Captain Jay Jonas. This is Cliff. I'm coming for you, brother. I'm coming for you. And that was the first, it, it choked me up. Uh, it's the first time in my career where I had become the person in need of rescue instead of the person coming to do the rescue. It would take over five hours before Jay Jonas and the 13 people trapped with him would finally be rescued. They owe their lives to an extraordinary twist of fate. Once the collapse reached our area, it kind of ran out of energy because the pile itself was about six to seven stories tall, the debris pile. And we, we were in that two-story cocoon. If you were lower than that, the debris settled there and, uh, and you didn't make it. If you were above that, you were part of the kinetic energy of the collapse and you didn't make it. So you really had to be where we were. Over there you can see a police emergency service unit. Uh, They're trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. Certainly that picture tells it all. Many of them just happy to be alive at this point, uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. In all, 412 rescue workers died in the World Trade Center, including 343 firemen. Josephine, is that you? It ends up I did make the right decisions that day, but I didn't know they were the right decisions at the time running into Josephine Harris, making this decision to stop and save her, we inadvertently saved ourselves. And I looked around, and there was this, this disarray. And I said, this, this, is, this is it. And he says, yeah, this is what's left. And I said, how many other people have come out of here? And he said, none. And I was just stunned. Don't push it under the rug. Don't forget it, because it can happen again. And I believe that they are going to try again. It won't be tomorrow, it won't be next year, but they're coming back. It was a day when we didn't think that it could happen to us, when we thought what we were too big and too strong and mighty. It's a constant reminder of what can happen again. So we need to remember September 11. Not the tragedy that happened, but the lesson that to be learned. We need to keep it alive because it can happen again.
Well, these are the pants that I was wearing on that day. And, and I made it my project. I guess it kept me a little from really going completely out of my mind. I made it my project to wash them by hand and every day I would wash them a little more and hang them up to dry and then I'd see some more dirt and I'd put them, I'd put more soap and then I'd, I'd, I'd scrub the legs because I, 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 I just had to get them clean. It was like, it was like, it was like washing away, it may sound silly, but washing away the dirt and evil and the bad and just getting it out and I did. And um, unfortunately they don't fit anymore, but they're clean. <laughs> This has been a presentation of the Discovery Channel and the BBC, world-class television.